Well, we are starting, fellas. It is it is good to have you. Uh, it's good to see your faces. Um, yeah, good to, guys, good to be here. The beards are looking good. How do you, how do you guys feel? Tell us how you feel. Up until yesterday, I was eating mine, and then I trimmed up, and now I'm not eating it anymore. The beard. <laughs> um yeah I, I i feel good um like the body feels strong um i'm like excited for what's to come still like body and mind are both feeling good so kind of like peak through hiker right now so that, that, that's, that's something we're gonna get to uh everybody if you're you're joining us here uh first thanks for thanks for tuning in uh on Ridge rivers and trails facebook here um, and we are joined by Leapfrog and Flapjack, and they are currently hiking the Pacific Crest Trail. Uh, we've done a few interviews. You could catch uh, most of them on our YouTube. You can backtrack and catch up as, uh, as far as where, where they've been and how they've gotten there, um, planning uh, and, you know, their experiences uh, thus far. So it's been super fun to kind of follow along uh, these past few months. And now you guys are joining us. And again, you're just, you're taking a zero day, a day where you're not hiking at all and taking the time to join our uh, Facebook community and just talk about the Pacific Crest Trail. So thank you. Uh, and you're joining us south of Bend. Is that correct? Uh, yeah, kind of. Uh, we just finished the part like right through Crater Lake National Park. Um, so yeah, right now we're somewhere south of Bend, Oregon, but we're still, we've got, we've hiked like 150 miles of Oregon and then still another 300 to go. So you've done just one state so far? Yeah. <laughs> uh, Cal California is a big, long one, nearly 1,700 miles of trail. Um, we'll, we'll be done with Oregon next week, though. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, well over half the trail is, is in California. So, uh, yeah, we've done one out of three states. So we're one-third done, right? <laughs> one-third, one-third done. 1,700 miles. So, But they break it up, right? Probably just to make you feel better about where yes. you've gotten. You have, like, southern... Uh, central and like northern cow or something sections that PCP yep. breaks up into or yep SoCal uh, the Sierra North Cal and then Oregon is its own section and Washington is its own section so right now we're kind of cruising through Oregon and get this done and yeah about 10 days and then uh, and then we just got to cruise through Washington so uh, so what what's your pick if you pick one of the sections um, SoCal Sierras or uh, North California what was the best section for you guys? The, the Sierra. I think we Yeah, so far it'd be the Sierra. Um, Oregon's been nice so far, just as far as being tame elevation wise and pretty easy miles. Um, but the Sierra had the most um, pretty stuff, I guess you would say. I mean, that's, that's a lot of the reason why you go out, right? You're trying to take in the views and fresh air and mountaintops. So it, it, yeah. Yeah, less the, the, the views, the the people, you know, the, the experience as a whole. Um, it's the Sierra is kind of like tops all of those things. You know, it's just a great experience all around, not just like the best views. Um, but, you know, there's, there's still a lot of trail ahead of us. And um, I'm hesitant to say the, the best is behind us because a lot of people rave about Washington um, and, and some of the stuff we have coming up in Oregon. So we still have a lot of stuff to look forward to. What, um, Sorry, I'm gonna I'm clicking back and forth here because uh, I'm gonna bring up some of your photos here too, Will, um, and try to catch people up to speed to some of that. And per usual, I'm really good at that kind of thing. <laughs> uh, let's see here. Uh, what hostel are you guys staying at? Uh, we're in an Airbnb right now, um, so kind of have like some space to ourselves, chance to do multiple loads of laundry um shower infinite times it's great all the good stuff a tv i can just binge watch marvel on what are you binge watching uh i just binge watched all of wandavision and i'm like two episodes away from finishing loki nice there you go i've needed a day to just sit in front of a tv for a while both very positive um so for other ways people can kind of uh, join in and follow here. So I just kind of pulled up, um, Will, your, your Instagram, uh, because you've just been sharing some amazing photos. So this is, this is your last post and you can kind of see uh, his handle up there, guys, if you want to check him out and spend a little bit more time checking him out, but um, uh, kind of reading about the experience, but 
can kind of walk us through, you know, this is your first state state line crossing, it looks like the Cali, uh, Oregon uh, border and you, yeah, you see that big, big number, two big numbers, but one of them's behind you must feel pretty <laughs> good, right? Yeah, it's kind of um, surreal to have the miles remaining be under a thousand because for so long, it's just like the miles remaining has been such a big number that it's like you almost like don't even think about it all that much. You just, you know, keep walking. And now we're starting to think a lot more about like the miles that we have left and that number is slowly ticking down. Um, so it's, it's starting to feel very real that uh, this journey will come to, come to an end at some point. Um, obviously right. still a lot of miles left. Um, but I mean, you know, getting out of California was a, a big milestone for us. Uh, m mentally, I, I think just to finish one state and be like, okay, that's, that's behind us now. And now we can move on to the next and just, take it one section at a time. Well, and Ben, we'll, we'll pull up your blog here next too, but you know, that's one of the things that you mentioned in your, your blog will kind of just um, mention again, there is, it's just kind of the, the mental game that you guys, the, the, the miles you have put in is, is so incredible at this point, your confidence has to be up. You feel great about being on the trail and, and finishing the trail, even though you still have, you know, well, in that photo, you know, about a thousand, thousand miles to go but um you just kind of hit a stride or a, a level of confidence there that you just feel you feel good like hey we're finishing this thing there's 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 both i mean there's there's some of that and there's also some of the the mental balance of like i've been out here for this is day 93 we've been out here for three months now and and so you know we've been out here for such a long time and so it starts to kind of wear on you and kind of like i've how much longer is this going to take um, so it's, it's balancing that, you know, like, you know, in some ways, yes, we're, we're really hitting our stride. In other ways, it's like, you, you got to dig deep mentally. So are you still, uh, for both of you, you still enjoying it? Uh, yes. I, I mean, I'm, I'm loving it. Absolutely. Um, you know, there's, there's something new in, in every day. Um, and it's, I, I always try to like, you know, find something positive or, um, and enjoy the the walking itself you know the the people the experiences and, and then just the walking there's days i enjoy there's days where i'm ready to go home so 30 days left gotta get them done gotta walk the miles gotta gotta leave yeah about uh two to two to one in favor of enjoying the days <laughs> yeah I'd, I'd say something like that yeah i mean it's you know i totally get it it's a it's a taxing thing and one of the other things that gets super taxing and so i see uh, you know a photo of you guys with a bunch of your trail family there um is that uh where's that at uh that's at that's at uh, lake tahoe lake tahoe um, yeah that was about a month ago and so, so this so is last last time you talked to us brian uh about 20 minutes after we got off the facebook live with you is that picture was taken so oh really yeah, oh, cool. <laughs> we we oh, went straight awesome. from the Facebook Live to the beach. Oh, good for oh man, what a night! You guys are living it up. Um, <laughs> but you know, one of the things, and and again, I think Ben, you alluded this in to this in your blog, is that um, you start seeing people uh, either fall behind or leave the trail, and I don't know how much of that you guys have experienced, but um, that taxes you, right? That you've been it's it's all been fun, and then as, as you see other people start to go, you can't help but to think about it and to also suffer some of the impacts of that is you kind of, you know, you're, you're losing yeah, friends and the experience is changing. Yeah. People ahead, uh, people behind people getting off trail because their journeys come to an end. Um, kind of changes your mentality when you're out there, you know, sometimes you're out there and you're hiking and all of a sudden in the middle of the day, you see your best friend run by who's doing a 30 and you're doing 20 and you're like, what the heck are you doing here? Um, and then other days, like you're just, you know, cruising through the woods and you're like who the heck are you who are you and you you know when you see those faces of the people you know it kind of makes your day that much more enjoyable um and when you're just meeting people again for the 40th time you know that gets tiring sometimes i can struggle through these so here well i kind of kind of skipped back to not now we're back in the more recent photos yeah yeah it's that's a little more recent um yeah, it's the end of California. That's uh, leaving Seed Valley, the Klamath River. That How's is the, um, talk to us about the weather and the fires. Um, since we last talked, I mean, you guys had, um, 
you know, that was obviously the fires were a pretty big op- obstacle for you guys. What's the, what's yeah, the latest? That was something that we were definitely concerned about and our concerns, you know, kind of came to fruition and, and fires have been a big issue on the trail this year. Um, obviously, you know, an, an issue for us is just that we have to, you know, skip a few miles of trail or, you know, our, our hike gets changed a little bit. And the way these fires impact other people, um, their homes, their communities, their businesses is, is far beyond the, the, the inconvenience to us. Um, but yeah, I mean, yeah, I mean, we've, you know, had a number of honestly weeks of hiking in smoke. We had to skip about 55 miles of trail um, due to an, an active wildfire. And there's going to be more miles we have to skip coming up due to more fires. Um, the PCT is now just subject to fire. That's become the reality of it. And through hikers are aware of that. And some people have had to skip more miles than others, some less. Um, it, it's just something you have to deal with. Uh, I think we've gotten tired of um, kind of running from fires per se and always having that stress and that worry of, you know, where's the next fire and constantly checking, um, you know, the, the status of fires or, you know, wondering about storms or, um, just like hiking in smoke is, is demoralizing because the views are, you know, like, like you said, one of the reasons we come out here and when the views are hidden by smoke, it's kind of makes you question what you're doing. Right. Uh, is there an app you guys are using for, for weather and for, uh, fires or smoke? Uh, largely just the PCTA. Um, they have a closures page that they update with, um, just closures, fires close to the trail, things like that. Um, there's also a CAGIS website where they do um, infrared fire tracking. So you can see active fires. So that's kind of nice to know what's close to the trail, what might become an issue. Um, and then I also use the National Forest Service's um, emergency response page, and they show all the fires nationally on there. So it's just kind of an, a, a quick way to get a good idea um, of where fires are popping off at. So we were in the. Um... Three Sisters area, which you guys are coming up on, and this was this was three years ago for us. But there were significant uh, burn areas, you know, on the PCT that you hiked through, and I, I remember that being a little demoralizing. And, and just you're, another thing is you're just totally exposed as well. I mean, the sun is just hitting you that much harder, um, so just that much more to deal with. So, yeah, at, at this point, we've had a, probably a cumulative of a couple hundred miles of hiking through burn areas of some form or another. And it's it's cool in some ways because you get to see, um, you know, this natural phenomenon. And then you get to see all the different stages of succession, like as the forest kind of comes back. Um, but but you're right. In some ways, it's not really the view that you're out there for. And in some ways, it's just kind of tough because, yeah, you're exposed to the sun and it's it's hot. And there's a huge difference temperature wise between shade and sun. Um, cause you know, it's 90 degrees, a, a lot of days out here and, um, in the sun, it's just brutal. So let's, let's switch gears from, uh, the, uh, <laughs> all, all the gray and <laughs> smoke, um, you know, looking at this, uh, you know, Alpine Lake or, or whatnot in this photo here, um, you guys still taking a lots of, sw- how many swims are you guys up to Sh- share some of the, uh, I don't know, awesome experiences that you let, guys have. Let- Definitely less swims than before. Uh, NorCal uh, had its moments where it was still beautiful when you got your rivers and creeks and lakes. Um, but getting into Southern Oregon, you know, in nor- Northern, Northern California, it's dried out a lot. Um, looking forward in two days about will be to Shelter Cove and then getting up into the Three Sisters. Lots more water that way. Lots more water into Washington. Um, yeah, you'll have but- along that section, you should have something every night to take a yeah. swim if you want. Yeah. Lake, lakes and ponds everywhere. Um, yep. But yeah, no, it's, uh, we're, I, I still try and hop in something every couple of days. The fun thing in this past section from Ashland up here to Crater Lake has been um, re- like resort hopping. So there's all these little like fishing resorts or like you just uh, cabin-y type of things where you can run a cabin. And for a while we were just going from like resort to resort or campground to campground. And that was nice because every day you got a, a drink or a sandwich or you could take a shower, which was, you know, that was a little pick me up. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And in place of the, the cold, you know, glacial water so yeah. for your muscles, you take a warm shower and get a bed. Totally. Um, you know, there's something the, the beds have been limited. Um, this this zero day is kind of our first time in a bed in quite a while. Yeah, this is the first um, bed in probably a month. Sleep better on the ground anyway. <laughs> I, I honestly I honestly do. I, I stay up too late in towns and 
you know, there's just other noises and stuff and I, I don't end up sleeping quite as well. And it's kind of nice when I get back out on the trail, I'm like, all right, I'm going to get a good night of sleep tonight. Like yep. I sleep better to bed. My sleeping pad has a slow leak. Oh no. We have another one on the way. <laughs> yeah. It's already delivered. Okay, cool. Good. Great warranties. <laughs> Thank goodness. Um, doesn't help you day to day, but um, good. It's getting fixed. So how, how is like uh you know, your bodies, your feet. Uh, I know that we're burning through some shoes. What are we on three pairs of shoes each at this point? Or what are we, what are we at? Um, I just finished out my third pair. I'm starting my fourth pair. Uh, this pair will get me pretty close to the end, but probably not all the way. So I end up going a little bit into a fifth pair of shoes, um, which is a crazy thought. But otherwise, I mean, the, you know, I, I haven't had blisters in a, a while. Uh, the, the feet hold up well. The, the body feels pretty good, you know as a through hiker you're just kind of used to aches and pains and it's it's tough on the body but as long as the pain's like moving around for me like one day this knee hurts the next day it's the, the other knee so as long as the pain's moving around I, I know it's nothing too serious so you just kind of keep walking awesome uh ben same for you uh, holding up. uh yeah so i'm on my third pair of shoes i picked my fourth up in about 100 miles they'll take me all the way to the border um mine have held up a little bit better than his just because, you know, brands are better. Um, <laughs> we're not going to shit talk any brands. Um, <laughs> but uh, um, yeah, no, uh, as far as like pains go, uh, I've been dealing with some tendonitis in my left knee for a while. Um, probably since like Aetna, which is mile 1600. Um, so now we're at 1800, so 250 some miles. Um, it's just kind of been one of those things of like, it's not going to get better till I stop for a while. Um, mm -hmm. So just trying to find the way to manage the pain, make the most comfort um, and just have the days go by as well as they can. Uh, typically it's like in the morning, it burns a little bit. And then a couple hours into the day, keep stretching, keep, you know, exercising it. And, you know, by the end of the day, it doesn't feel terrible, but then you go to sleep, wake up the next day and it's all locked up again, rinse and repeat. You're just kind of doing some vitamin I at night before bed or? Uh, I typically do uh, ibuprofen in the morning, um, Tiger Balm, which is just like a topical. Um, if, if it feels real bad, I'll do that at lunch. Um, and then in the evening, I typically just stretch. I'm not doing any ibuprofen in the evening. Um, just kind of let my body do its own natural thing. Well, I think the footwear, I mean, well, you said you'd be surprised if you, you would. If you go, if you have to get a fifth pair or whatever, I, I think I, that's... I probably will get a fifth pair. Um, yeah, that's totally I, I would expect it. Yeah, I would expect five or six, especially since you guys are doing lighter trail runners. Um, but that's awesome that you're getting that life out of them. beating them up. Yeah, I mean, I'm, I'm getting five to six hundred miles out of a pair of shoes and, and Ben's getting a, a little bit longer. Um, and, you know, some of that might be the way I walk. Some of it's, you know, one brand holds up a little bit better than another. But that all comes down to what fits your feet. And I'm really happy with, you know, the shoes that I'm wearing and, and how they fit me. And so, you know, I'm willing to pay the price of an additional pair of shoes for that extra comfort. So. Guys, I have um, uh, three questions that were uh, phoned in. <laughs> um, are you ready? Go. Let's hear it. For these. All right. Um, so your daily foods, we haven't talked. I mean, I, I guess because we know since we're shipping it out, we kind of know what you guys have and everything like that. But so for, for everyone uh, listening, Talk about your daily diet, the, what, what you're having on a daily basis, and how do you spice that up so it's not boring? How are you keeping from having not having the same thing, or are you just having the same thing every day? Um, I eat a lot of the same things, but I change up flavors. So I'm eating, you know, a lot of protein bars, and then like you know crackers. You know, breakfast I have pop tarts, and uh, my big secret is donuts. It's like you know those little like individually wrapped like six packs of chocolate donuts are the best way to start your morning, um, and a great calorie boost too. Um, then I eat like honey buns, and I'm I'm looking for high caloric value uh, foods at at this point. Uh, and then dinners, you know, I'm trying to you know rice sides and pasta sides um you know some ramen and, and then some like mountain house meals and stuff like that you know just just trying to like keep enough diversity in the diet um that I'm not tired of anything and I haven't really gotten tired of too much so far um just by changing flavors and stuff um I think when I'm done I don't want to eat these things again 
Um, <laughs> not for a long time, at least, but, right? Yeah, not 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 for a long time. But no, I'm not too tired of anything. And at this point, it's just you know keeping the calories going as much as we can to sustain the body and try to put down 3,500 or 4,000 calories in a day. Um, uh, ben, how about yourself? Yeah, so um, I typically have been doing about the same thing. Um, donuts and pot tarts for breakfast, which the donuts are good. I didn't have those originally and they're tasty. Um, I do the coconut crunch though, cause slightly more calories and they crush in my bag better and hold back together. Um, you know, your, my, my day snacks are the one thing that I try and change up as much as I can. So typically doing cliff bars, but then I'm throwing in like some slim gyms or some chips or some chocolates here and there. Um, you know, your gummies, your trail mix, all that good stuff. Um, and then dinners, I did a uh, repackaged mountain house. So those have been pretty solid as far as keeping my energy up. The one nice thing that I liked that we did was um, we did um, kind of like half of our resupplies as boxes and half of our resupplies is going to a grocery store or whatever, you know, source of food is in town. And the nice thing with that is like, yeah, the boxes, it's pretty much the same thing that we get over and over and over again. But every time we get to go out in town, you kind of get to add some variety to your life um, that way. So uh, my thing has been like throw a can of Pringles in there, or like, um, mm -hmm. you know, grab a bag of gummies or do you like do something a little different than uh, you would typically have. The that fun was my thing next question. Yeah. The fun thing I hear is been like every. You. Yeah, everybody like straps like friggin' bags of Fritos to the top of their backpack or like I've seen people load up pizza in their backpacks. Um, nothing too crazy as far as taking out town food. So you haven't packed out any like super perishable like pizza, cheeseburgers? Not, not I, trying to... you know, there's one climb where I, I packed out a, a Subway sandwich and it was terrific because I was smelling it the entire way up the climb um just kept me going because i told myself when i got to the top i could eat it um and that was delicious but i haven't i haven't packed out a, a ton of stuff um i don't know just it's stuff stuff gets hard to pack out sometimes will i'm watching the uh, message thread here and i just found out that you're buying drinks for everyone when you get back that's that's, that's me that's that's from ben. That's... <laughs> you don't see the dash bed at the bottom bud Oh, oh, dash Ben. Shoot. <laughs> well, I look forward to that day. All right. Come on. Hurry back, guys. Um, what about, uh, what do, you know, we haven't talked at all on any of the calls about wildlife. Um, what have you guys, what have you guys seen out there? What, what's that experience like? Um, yeah, I mean, there's, I guess there's a, a lot of diversity of stuff out here. You know, deer is the most common thing we see. And those guys are not shy in the least and wake you up in the middle of the night, um, stomping next to your tent. Um, sometimes rather annoying. Uh, you know, we've seen a, a few bears each, uh, nothing of a close encounter, of not, not the story that you want to hear, really. I mean, the way that you want to see a bear and it's not really causing any problems for us and it's just exciting to see it. Um, I think we've each seen coyotes at this point. Um, and then I, I saw a bobcat down in the desert and then I've seen a, you know, I like watching birds. So I've seen a, a ton of great bird life. Oh, that's um, awesome though. Bo bobcat sighting is going to be a little bit more rare. That's all. Cat. That's sweet. That was cool. Uh, no, no mountain lions yet. Still hoping for that. Uh, actually, I did have a pine martin a couple of days ago. Um, so that was like another exciting one. You're did making. Olivia wants to know if it's, if it uh, smelled bad. Hmm. Your little pine martin. Oh, uh, she's, she's jealous of all these. Uh, I'm I'm not sure I really smelled the pine martin, but it was cool to see. It just <laughs> ran across the <laughs> And I, was, like, I, I smelled a carnivore and it smelled like decaying meat. Mm. And it was like, oh God, yummy smells. Oh, baby. yeah. Um, Olivia, do you want to ask a question? Oh, um, okay, I suppose. Yeah, yeah, yeah. come on in. Come on in You're here. Face in here. Come on, Olivia. Hey, hey there. Misses you. So I have like a two part question that is from Emma and I. So when did you guys like first feel your trail legs? And since then, have they gotten bigger? Can you like, do you feel like you've kind of like lost those miles? Like how have you kind of like, I don't know, dealt with like your 
like when did you, like when did you essentially when did you feel the best and do you still feel that good or is it actually going down yeah like yeah. something like that um i think you probably i first started like noticing the trail legs like four or five hundred miles in when suddenly you can walk 25 miles in a day and you still feel like you can do more at the end of the day like your body feels good you don't wake up stiff or sore or anything um and i at this point like i still kind of have those trail legs like you know, knock out 25 miles and feel good. Like it doesn't take me all day to do it. I can just like move at a consistently like pretty good pace all day long and just kind of like keep going. Um, at some point the trail legs might start to go down. Um, I don't know, like as of now, I still feel like pretty solid physically, um, but we'll, we'll see how that continues. Uh, yeah, for me, I think it was somewhere around um, Cajon Pass and like Baden Powell. My buddy Alex came out to hike with us, and um, we did we hiked Baden Powell, and he's just like huffing and puffing, and we're walking up like it's nothing. And that was when it kind of hit. Yeah, that was when it kind of hit, and was like, oh, we're 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 in better shape than everybody else now. Um, as far as like the continuation of that, I would agree with Will. Like. Um, I still feel good. Like it doesn't feel hard to do some of the bigger mile days that we do. Um, then like the slight knee injury, um, definitely is something that like detracts from like how, how well the trail legs would feel. Um, but you know, I still do feel that same amount of like energy and, um, fitness that I had before. Awesome. Heck yeah. Um, and then, well, I have one from your mom too. Um, what do you miss most about home? Um, I, that sounds yeah, that was, like it's dated. <laughs> no, that's that's a, that was, that was um, someone kind of asked me. Some, I was talking with someone a week or so ago on trail, and he asked me a, a similar question of you know what are the top three things you miss, um, and and so I'll give the same answer I gave him. And so one would be um, like time with like family, friends, like girlfriends, like just like that quality time with like other people is is something I miss. Um, secondly, the ability to just like walk up to your fridge or your pantry or whatever and have whatever food I want, whenever I want, as much as I've wanted it. Like the, the food is something I miss. And lastly, it was like something to do with like downtime. So like reading a book or listening to music, like I, I miss doing those things, but I don't really get to do them out here, so. That's a good question. Uh, and yeah, Bet Betsy's to credit for a few of those questions we've had today. So thank <laughs> you, Betsy, for, for joining in. Anybody else want to post a question on there? Uh, but I want Ben to answer still first. Oh, answer the same question. What do I miss? Yeah. Um, let's see. Sitting on a couch, binge watching TV all day, which is what I'm doing today. Uh, <laughs> uh waking up in a bed next to my dog oh, um, and uh pro yeah probably just like going out with friends and relaxing because uh you know a lot of what you do out here is just wake up walk maybe have some fun during the day depending on who you're around go to bed wake up walk do it again you know it's rinse and repeat after a while right yeah that solitude and that time to think uh, by yourself is, is so yeah. valuable and you, you can accomplish so much and find out it's so got its positives yourself. for sure but uh man it can get old yeah like yeah how many days can you do that <laughs> <laughs> um so definitely get that to the, the social aspect of it are you guys still with um some of the same group from last no time we we're alone now largely um everyone who we hike who we were hiking with is for the most part ahead of us now there's still some people that we started with that are behind us some people that have gotten off trail um sheriff who was with us for a while she got injured so she had to take some time off at ashland and we'll hopefully heal up and maybe meet us up at cascade locks in a week or so awesome. um so yeah largely it's just us right now um you know we'll catch up to friends at trail days in about a week and everybody will be there in uh cascade locks from like the 20th to the 22nd and and it's a little celebration of the trail, just uh, just like trail days on the AT, you know, vendors come out, everybody celebrates, you know, hiking in the PCT and, you know, the community out here. So I feel silly now. I didn't even think about the PCT probably also has a trail days. And so yeah. Yeah. you think it's uh, as rowdy as, uh, as uh, gosh, what do I want to call? I don't even know what I want to call the AT's version, 
but expecting the same thing, the 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 party and the we'll I, find out. Yeah, we'll we'll find out. I think it definitely gets a smaller crowd than the AT one does. Um, but I, I think people are still gonna be just as excited to be there and try to make it as much of a good time as possible. So you guys are timing timing it to be there during trail days. Do you have to adjust your schedule much or it's just happening? It's it's gonna be perfect timing. Um, really with where we're gonna be when we're we're walking is we're going to drop into Cascade Locks kind of the day that things start rolling and happening. So it's, we timed it perfectly. Um, Don't have to like hitch up anywhere or um, catch a ride or anything like that. That's awesome. Yeah. A lot of times people have to like shuttle back or something if they Mm -hmm. want to catch it. So, cause you don't want to slow yourself down too much. Uh, uh, We have a question from a top fan, Dalton. Um, And uh, I I maybe missed some of what, Ben was saying, uh, but he wants to know what happened to the knee. Yeah, so my knee, um, it's just an overuse injury uh, going into, so prior to coming out to hike, um, I had had some mild tendonitis in some different spots, um, kind of got that under control, came out, and every once in a while I'd feel a twing or a twinge. In this year, as my knees got pretty tired from the pounding, um, getting into NorCal and like getting into the end of NorCal, we were kind of pushing some bigger miles, and one of the days I was moving pretty fast, um, I think I just kind of tweaked it then, and um, I'm pretty sure it's just um, quadricep tendonitis. So it's just some tearing in the the connection between my kneecap and my quadricep uh, muscle, um, and it's just one of those things. As it's an overuse injury, um, you know, takes a couple Maybe. couple couple weeks to heal, but it's just one of those things of like been hiking for a while, so things start wearing down, you know, right. So maybe, maybe preventable if you slow down a little bit, but really for what you're doing, you can't, you're going to just keep going and you're going to, you have to get the mileage in. Like it sounds not so preventable almost. And yeah, it's, it's, it's one of those things that's kind of tough. Cause it's like, you're between a rock and a hard place. Hopefully I can keep the miles around like 24 to 25 a day. Um, there's going to be a couple of days that are longer than that, but you know, that number the past like week or two hasn't been that unmanageable and it hasn't been, anything where I felt like I was struggling or like in pain doing it. Um, and I just picked up a knee brace yesterday that I'm going to try for the next week and see if that has any, um, added benefits for me. So, you know, you just kind of play around with it and see what feels good, see what doesn't and you make it work. Yep. And you, you say it like it's low mileage, like mid twenties is, I know it's, it might be low for like two thirds of the way through the PCT, but it's not low mileage, buddy. Like, you yeah, guys are still yeah. rocking it. So, it, it, in my mind, it's low mileage because uh, I was talking to a friend of ours today, and uh, he actually hit his first sixty uh, the other day. Yeah. So, oh, oh. he 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 passed me uh, three days ago, and he was in the middle of doing a forty, and then the next day he did a fifty, and then he slowed down and did a twenty-eight, and then he picked it up again and did a. a Wow. So, yeah, he was he was essentially running with his backpack at the end. Wow. Uh, Will, I don't know if you caught, uh, this was two weeks ago, I had an interview with Magic Hat, who's on the uh, CDT, uh, completing his Triple Crown. So, uh, but it was it was funny because, yeah, he, I mean, you know, when it's your third long trail, yeah, he, he didn't sound like he had any problems knocking out 40s. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, there's, like there's definitely some people that are crushing the, the bigger mileage without issue. Um, he and I are also carrying heavier packs than a lot of those triple crowners and, and some most of the other three hikers out here. Um, maybe we'd have an easier time doing bigger miles with lighter packs. Um, part of it's also just like a, a mental thing is, you know, like physically, like I feel like I can walk more than 25, 30 miles in a day. But I just like at some point I hit a, a mental block where I'm like, I'm tired of walking. And I'm ready to sit down and, and be done, even if my body still feels pretty good. So I, I don't like mentally feel the need to push like super big miles. And like timing wise, like I don't think we're like we're in a rush or anything like that. So we don't need to push miles like that. Hey, you, you know, like like you guys have already mentioned, it's it's you've done so much already and you could see how fast it's going by. And in a blink of a blink of an eye, you'll be through it. Right. Yeah. So, so you know do you know make it last four more days by doing 25 instead of 28 or whatever yeah. you know whatever that comes out to and swim a little extra mm-hmm. or have an extra slice of pie before leaving town whatever it is highly encouraging and i think you guys are doing it right you guys are doing it your way so 
kudos to that. Yeah, definitely trying to enjoy this last, you know, month, a little over a month left on trail, probably. Um, just kind of soak in every moment and uh, take it for what it is. Yep. So trail-wise, not, not about coming home, but trail-wise, um, obviously you've got some really cool stuff coming up. What are you most looking forward to uh, in this, what we'll say? I mean, I know it's not the final section. You still have the rest of Oregon and then Washington, but this next stretch, um, What's uh, what's the biggest thing that you're like? Can't wait till we get there. Cascade Locks, Bridge of the Gods. I'm uh, I'm excited to walk across that bridge into Washington. It says uh, you get there 500 miles, 21 days. You're you're right in the end game. Yeah, that will kind of be like the beginning of the end for you when you cross that bridge, saying, "Hey, this is now we're we're basically home free, barring." accident right like yeah essentially barring you know massive wildfires accidents or a uh, freak early snowstorm um you're you're essentially home free yeah that that would, that would be super cool and that's a, a a pretty cool area too right like yeah yeah columbia river gorge is beautiful yeah well um i don't know there's a you know i'm definitely looking forward to cascade locks and and getting there but there's other stuff before that i'm looking forward to um i want to see like the three sisters wilderness it should be spectacular um and then like the mount hood area should be cool dropping down into cascade locks hit like eagle falls get to like walk behind the waterfall pretty popular trail um so yeah lots of stuff to look forward to and then washington's you know it's a lot of people rave about it being their favorite state so i'm looking forward to washington as well plenty of, of cool stuff there and um soak that in you get into some of like the deep forest up there, right? Is it kind of change of landscape? Yeah, it gets a little bit more wet as you get up into southern Washington. So you start, you do get a little bit of that rainforesty vibe um, yeah. versus like the dry pine here that we've had in Oregon so far. More, uh, you guys go through any redwoods thus far or? Um, uh, we stay away from the redwoods for the most part. We stay further inland than the, you know, that cold. Not the runs. parks proper, sorry, not the parks proper, but just. Um, it's that like style of here. environment yeah not 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 so much okay. pretty cool man there's a it's pretty exciting I, I i if it were me i think this next section you know or washington specifically i just totally in love with it. i mean not to not to put down anything that you guys have gone through thus far here's some really cool stuff but uh i would be i would be super pumped for the washington section yeah just kind of knowing some of that um, that environment and uh, you know, it's a lot to look forward to. Definitely a, a fitting cap to the journey. Um, it's leaves leaving something to look forward to at the end is, is exciting and keeps you going. And um, how are you asking home? Figure that out. <laughs> TBD. TBD. That's, that's, still a, that's still far enough away that I'm not at the point where I can think about that yet. You know, it's, isn't RRT leasing us a private jet to fly us back with a little party? Uh, yeah, yeah. We'll just the RRT private jet. We actually already have one, so we don't need a <laughs> one or anything. Just, we need to we'll get a pilot because I'm, I'm not that good at landing yet. Emily yeah, Emily's a pilot. There we go. Emily will fly the uh, the new <laughs> private jet that we bought and come pick you up. Olivia offered up Cody. He said, yeah, Cody yeah, will come get you. Cody will come get you in the van. Yeah. Let's come on in. Um, uh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> He's got nothing going on. Yeah, yeah no, nothing. Yeah, well, well, I mean, we'll we'll get home eventually, and it'll feel good when we do, but also be bittersweet. So, yeah, okay. totally. Always is. Well, guys, I don't want to take up your whole night. I appreciate it. Um, I think um, I think we covered a lot of ground and got a lot of insight from the trail from you guys, and I really appreciate you taking the time to share your share your uh, stories and your your travels. Yeah, absolutely. Thanks for having us on, BJ and Olivia, too. Uh, always good to do these and, and talk and kind of share some of what's going on. And I think it, we both feel good knowing that people back home are interested in, in what we're doing. And it's it's a personal journey for us. That's why we're out here. But it's it's kind of cool to know that a lot of other people also care about it and, and want to hear about it. So you're you're always making a bigger impact than you think from from going out from from the people that are closest to you to the people that you haven't met or don't even know um that you could open their eyes to new potential new adventures new possibilities and and what you guys are doing so um yeah definitely take that for you know everything that it's it's worth it's it's a big deal uh, excited to see you guys in a month or so 
I know. So I'm, I figured. I'm so happy. I can't yeah. wait to see you guys and give you big hugs. I think our follow up, because uh, I, you know, I think we need a wrap up. It's only, it's only right since we've done. Is this our fourth one? Yeah, fourth, yeah third no. from the PCT, but fourth total or fifth total. Shoot. Either way, it's only, it's only right that we give everybody a follow up. But I think, I think we might even be able to do that when you're home. Um, yeah, we can get on and, in. Uh, in early October sometime maybe and do a little aftermath. Yeah, that'd be awesome. That'd be awesome. Maybe even some in-person stuff. So, um, weird, weird. Yeah. Um, all right. Well, you guys probably have a, 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 a lake to go jump in or a hot tub or a might, might go get a hot tub. Yeah. Pizza to eat or something better than me. So, um, <laughs> love you guys. Uh, you guys are killing it. I appreciate you. Um, keep trekking. You got this. Love See you guys. Thank you. Bye. See you. See you guys.